What's up guys, Luke here, and today we're going to do a very special edition of Maximum Value Redemptions. I say special because so far we've had some really big league redemptions worth 10, 11 cents per point, and even higher. But today I wanna to show you what those valuations look like. Sometimes when you book something you think is really special, but when you get to the math part, it's just not anything to brag about. Today I wanna to dive into some Singapore Airlines business class and show you what I just booked, or well, kinda tried to book. Okay, I'm in the process of booking this. You'll understand if you watch the whole video, there is a good chance you also learn something because I definitely had some issues that I had to deal with and I wanna share them with you. But first, if you are new here, I talk about credit cards, points, miles, cash back, and travel. If you like that sort of thing, subscribe to the channel. And if you learn anything from this video, slap that like button because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna save you at least one Google search. With that out of the way, let's get right into this version of Maximum Value Redemptions. Let me set the stage. I already have some beach redemptions for this summer, so I want to take my son and my wife somewhere before school starts. That should be a pretty easy ride. The other goal is I want to get some experience on a new international airline. The way I see it, if I'm gonna be talking about redemptions, I need to have that street cred and I have a list of airlines I wanna fly, particularly in business or first class. To bring it all in, there are a few destinations that are on my wife's bucket list and Germany just so happens to belong on that list. Schnitzel, Castles, beer, and all that, right? So let's see what we can do. The first thing I thought of was Lufthansa first class, and then I remembered that they only open award seats like three days before takeoff, and that's not actually my style when traveling with family. So what's plan B? Well, how many of you have heard of a fifth freedom flight? Well, in the aviation world, a fifth freedom flight is one where an airline from one country flies between two other countries. There is normally some type of agreement between these countries for this to be possible. One such example we've talked about on the series is the JFK to Milan on Emirates Airlines, which is based out of Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Now there is a little more to a fifth freedom flight than all that, but that's not what this video is about. You guys want the redemption details, so I will get on with it. We're gonna fly from New York's JFK to Frankfurt, Germany on Singapore Airlines. I really wanna fly on Singapore, and I don't see me visiting that country anytime soon, so this is my next best option. My wife and son have never flown international business class, so I told my wife, and now she's super excited about visiting Deutschland. Why wouldn't she, right? Let's take a quick moment to talk about Singapore Airlines. They are the flagship carrier of, you guessed it, Singapore. They've been around over 76 years. They operate 146 aircraft flying to 75 destinations. They are famous for their first class product, the Singapore Suites, which is on their A380 aircraft that we won't be booking this time. So here's how I did it because it's not all that straightforward. I booked this as two one-way tickets and I will show you how I did it or how I am doing it in that order. First things first, New York JFK to one of the busiest airports in Europe, FRA in Frankfurt, Germany. I actually got this idea from watching one of Mark Reese's latest videos about redemptions. At first I didn't think it was all that great and the more I looked at it, the more it made sense considering one of my main priorities is to avoid excessive taxes and surcharges. So let's Google this joker. And by the way, guys, these are not my exact dates and I'm not going to show you my exact itinerary, but I will still be able to get the point across, I promise. Here we see a few options with Singapore nonstop actually being quite a bit cheaper as a cash price than Lufthansa and Delta at just over $1,500. My actual flight was just over 1800 but we get the picture. We're not paying either one of those rates, especially for three passengers. So how can I get there on points? Well, first let's check out Singapore's site, and most of the dates are waitlisted, and I'm not interested at all with messing with that, but there are some open dates, and we are flexible, so I see the cheapest is 81,000 Singapore Chris Flyer miles. Now, comment below what you think of that price. I honestly don't think that is all that bad, especially if I were flying solo. 
But after watching Mark Reese's video, I see that I can likely find the same flight booking through Aeroplan Air Canada. And boom, the first try, I see the same $1,500 plus flight for 60,000 Aeroplan points and just 76 bucks. Now with Singapore, it was only $5.60, but that's a fairly large difference on points. So I pulled the trigger with Aeroplan Air Canada. Thanks, Mark. So let's take a few minutes to talk about Aeroplan Air Canada. How do we get points in this program? Well, first of all, they are a great Star Alliance partner. And for us, we can transfer some of our credit card points straight to Aeroplan. I can tell you how I did it basically because I had a surplus of points from more than one issuer. I transferred 60,000 MR points from American Express, 60,000 UR points from Chase, and 60,000 Capital One miles to Aeroplan and booked that flight no problem for a total of 180,000 Aeroplan points and 165 bucks. So let's break this part down because it initially looks great, but we don't get that usual super redemption. $5,418 minus $165 in cash or 180,000 points. This gives us a barely respectable 2.9 cents per point. You think that will knock your Aunt Connie socks off? Well, I guess it depends on how bad she wants that wiener schnitzel. See, we don't always get the jaw dropping cents per point, but if you look at our other redemptions, this one is just as good product wise. It's just the cash value doesn't seem to be overinflated for whatever reason. But for me, I still think it's a great value here. Things don't get any better for the return trip, however which from my experience is always a bit more expensive. Once I talk about the return redemption, you will learn something about transferring points to airlines, so stay with me. So I use the same technique for the return trip, and this is what I learned. Sometimes finding that saver award availability is tough, so finding three seats is much, much tougher. There are days that a return trip will be the same as 60,000 aeroplan points back to JFK, but I wasn't able to find any days that could accommodate three of us. It looked so dim, I was willing to fly back to JFK in economy because that was only 25,000 Chris Flyer miles per seat with Singapore Airlines. And honestly, that's probably a great option for me most of the time, but I really wanted this trip to be special. So back to Singapore. Singapore had a lot of waitlisted dates, but I was able to find three business class seats on the day I wanted to fly back for 81,000 Singapore Chris Flyer miles each. I know, I know, not earth shattering, but I do have a lot of points I need to use, so this is not a bad option for me, especially when you compare the return trip price of 2,841 bucks per seat. How does that measure out? Well, 243,000 points transferred, again, from American Express, Chase, and Capital One, versus $8,500. We get a value of three and a half cents per point. So at the end of the day, we are getting good value, at least I think, but it's not anything to brag about. And guess what? That happens. Will cents per point change the fact that my son gets to cruise the Rhine River or we get to see the historical sites around the Black Forest? Nope. He won't care and it's still a lot better than cashing them out for one cent. Now here comes the fun part. I said I transferred points from three major issuers, right? Well, the initial transfer to Aeroplan went like this. Amex, instant. Capital One, instant. Chase, boom, instant. Easy. So obviously, Singapore Airlines would be just as easy. Okay, so I transfer American Express points to Singapore Airlines Chris Flyer, instant. Capital One transfer, boom, instant. Transfer Chase. I get a message, your transfer has started. Uh, what? I wait a few minutes, nothing. An hour, nothing. Now keep in mind, it's tough to find three seats in business class with award space. And right now I need 240,000 Chris Flyer miles and my account only says 151,000. I really don't want that many Chris Flyer miles being orphaned in that account. So I call Singapore Airlines and I speak with a very knowledgeable, squared away service agent that says he can put these tickets on hold for 10 days. So hopefully, problem solved. I head to Google and ask how long Chase might take for this transfer, and I got a lot of answers. 24 hours, one week. So right now, about two hours ago, the points hit my Singapore Airlines account, 
it took four days. Now I have to call Singapore Airlines and book this over the phone, which if you're anything like me, you don't talk on the phone, you don't like it, but everything looks like it will be good to go later this afternoon. They are actually scheduled to call me back here in a little while to finish up this booking. I also want to mention the hotel situation. Since we love to debate which hotel program is great, especially overseas, I want to share the two main choices for me. We want to have a base headquarters in a town called Mines, and they have a Hilton and a Hyatt Regency right on the Rhine River, and they both look really nice. After picking some sample bookings, the Hilton points option comes to a terrible value of 0.4 cents per point, and the Hyatt looked promising, but they won't even take points for the stay. So at the end of the day, I booked the Hyatt because it was both nicer and cheaper cash-wise. Go Team Hyatt, no points. So guys, that is my redemption for this summer. I do have a couple questions. Do you think three points or three and a half points percent is satisfactory? We all talk about how Hyatt, we can get two and a half points and we basically value transferable currencies at two points percent. So we're still doing better than that, right? Well, comment below, tell me what you think. Am I spending too many points for just a quick trip to Europe? Also guys, if you have time, check out my links in the description. Using my links does benefit the channel, especially the Rakuten link. Rakuten is a cashback shopping portal that you can opt to earn American Express membership rewards points in lieu of cashback. Using my link below will get you $30 cashback or 3,000 American Express MR points on your very first purchase of $30 or more. Guys, that's it for me. If you've stayed all the way to the end, I appreciate you and I thank every single one of you.